In this video, I will demonstrate how to perform a two-way ANCOVA. Now, the two-way ANCOVA involves having two or more independent categorical variables with two or more levels or conditions or groups, one dependent continuous outcome variable, and then one or more continuous covariates. Now, many of the assumptions and kind of the preliminary analysis that we do with the one-way ANCOVA will also apply here in the two-way ANCOVA. So I'm not going to go into uh, too much detail about dealing with the assumptions for this two-way ANCOVA example. You can refer to the one-way ANCOVA video to get a good review of the different assumptions and how we handle those assumptions when we do uh, ANCOVAs. So in this example, what I'm going to do is I'm going to be looking at the effect of a intervention in the uh, teaching technique and I want to be able to determine the effect of these three different teaching techniques on someone's final exam score. In this case their final exam score in a statistics course. And so we have three different groups receiving three different instructional techniques. One group is going to emphasize uh, improving their math skills. The second group is going to emphasize their confidence level with statistics and with math. And the third group is going to be involved in doing group problem solving uh, of statistics problems. And then all three groups are going to be measured on, on a final exam of statistics knowledge. They all had taken a pretest, however, on their statistics knowledge. And so we're going to use the pretest score as the covariate. We want to eliminate any effect the pretest might have on their post test score. The other independent variable we're going to examine is gender. We want to see if gender also has an effect on someone's statistics knowledge on using the final exam score. Now we could use gender as a covariate um, and do a one-way ANCOVA, but in this case we think that uh, gender could be easily used as an independent variable, as, as a a factor that could have an effect on the final exam score as well. And we sometimes refer to this as a moderator variable. Um, so it moderates or influences the effect of the under, other independent variable. And we want to see if there is that interaction between uh, gender and then the instructional method. So because we want to see that interaction between the two independent variables, we're not going to treat gender as a covariate. We're going to treat it as its own factor, its own independent variable. So a lot of times when we think about the effect of a treatment, we can very often think of another independent variable or another moderator variable that we can utilize as part of um, the study as well. So our research question here is going to be, does gender influence the effectiveness of three different teaching programs uh, on people's final exam score by itself? And then is there an effect of the three different interventions on final exam score by themselves? And then lastly, is there an interaction between gender and uh, teaching intervention on final exam score? So again, to summarize, we have two, two categorical independent variables, uh, gender and then type of teaching technique. We have one continuous uh, dependent variable or outcome, and that's score on a final exam. And then we have one covariate, which is the pretest of statistics knowledge before taking the final exam and also before the interventions. So the assumptions that we have are all the normal uh, factorial ANOVA assumptions that we would have. For example, nor normally distributed outcome variable, uh, homogeneity of variance. So we need to check those. And then we also have additional ANCOVA assumptions. And these would be that the covariate was measured prior to the intervention or experimental manipulation, in this case the pretest. The covariate is measured without error or as reliably as we can. The, two covari or the covariate, if there's more than two, or if there's more than one, excuse me, if there's two or more covariates, that they're not strongly correlated with one another. Uh, the linear relationship between the outcome or dependent variable and the covariate for all groups are linear. And then lastly, the relationship between the covariate and the dependent variable is the same for each of the groups. In other words, there's homogeneity of the regression slopes. So again, these are all assumptions that need to be checked beforehand. Uh, I'm not going to go, I'm not going to do those as part of this example. You can see those in the one-way ANCOVA video just so we can get to interpreting uh, how we do the two-way ANCOVA.
So at this point, we're going to assume we checked all of those assumptions and all of those assumptions were met. And so how we perform the two-way and COVID then is to go to the Analyze menu, choose General Linear Model, and then Univariate. And so the first thing we want to do is move our outcome variable into the dependent variable box, and in this case that's final exam score. We want to move our two independent variables, in this case sex and type of class or type of instruction, into the fixed factors box. And we want to move pretest, which is our covariate, into the covariates box. Okay, then, we then click on the model button and make sure full factorial is checked in the specify model section and then we click continue and then we're going to go to the options button and we want to move our two independent variables into the display means for box so move sex and group into the display means for box and then we're also going to click on this interaction term and also move that into the box. And so that's going to provide us with the mean scores on our dependent variable split for each of the groups and also adjusted for the influence of the covariate. Now in the bottom section we want to go ahead and choose in the display box here, just choose descriptive statistics, estimates of effect size, observed power, and homogeneity tests. Now since one of our outcome variable or excuse me one of our independent variables has more than two levels has three levels in this case we can set this up to go ahead and do post hocs and then we'll have that available uh, if we need it so if if group shows statistical significance we'll have the post hoc results available so we can examine which pairs of groups were significantly different from each other. So we want to check, uh, check compare main effects. Now what we also want to make sure we're doing um, is because we have repeated measures here, we did a pretest and a post-test, we want to make sure we choose the Bonferroni post-hoc so we can account for that uh, testing effect. All right, then we click Continue. And the next thing we want to do is click on the Plots button. And so this is going to allow us to produce a graph of the differences between the groups and this will also help us determine if there might be an interaction between gender and type of instructional technique. So we want to highlight our first independent variable, in this case sex, and move this into the horizontal axis box. And then take our second independent variable group and move that into the separate lines box. And then we want to go ahead and click add. And then we click continue. All right, once that's done, we can go ahead and click OK. So now we have our output. And so the first box we can look at is labeled descriptive statistics. And this is going to give us our means for each of our three groups, instructional groups, and also separated out by gender. So we can see the male math, mean math scores, or or mean scores, uh, final exam scores for the math group, for the confidence group, for the group work group. We can also see the same thing for females. All right, our next stage is to examine one of those assumptions, and that's uh, equality of variance among the groups. So we're going to use Levine's test to examine that. And so again, if this is greater than point, so the significance value for Levine's is greater than 0.05 then that means that we have equality of variance, which is what, what we want. If that value is less than 0.05, that means we violated the assumption of equality of variance. And so that becomes kind of a limitation of the analysis that we do. And so whatever result we come up with, we're going to be uh, somewhat skeptical of the accuracy of that result. So in this case, we, we've gotten what we wanted. We, we've uh, met that assumption of equality of variance. Now the main and COVID results are presented in the next table, this test of between subjects effects table. 
And we want to know whether there's a significant main effect for any of our independent variables, group or sex, and also whether there's an interaction between these two variables and whether any of these are significant. So when we've got factorial ANOVAs like, like we have here, uh, what's really of most interest to us is the interaction. So we want to check that first. So we want to look for the line that says sex by group, that's the interaction between our two factors, and we want to look at the p-value or the significance value associated with that interaction. Now in this case we have a significant interaction, okay, it's less than 0.05. Now if the interaction is significant, our two main effects are, are really not important because the effect of one independent variable is dependent on the level of the other independent variable. Um, so as we look at that and we can see that we have a significant interaction, whatever effect sex has by itself or whether effect group has by itself is not really important. So in this case, our significance value for our interaction is statistically significant. It's less than 0.05. And so this significant interaction effect suggests that males and females respond differently to the three different teaching techniques or the three different programs. So the main effects for group and for sex, if we look at those, we can see that sex is not statistically significant, but group is. Now because group is statistically significant, we could possibly say that, that group technique or teaching technique does have an effect by itself. So we may be able to say that one intervention is better than the other, but we don't know if that's going to be better for males versus better than females because of this interaction. Now we can also look at the effect size, as indicated by the partial eta squared. And we can see here that the effect size for the interaction is 0.235, which is moderate. Um, and if we multiply this by 100, we get around 23.5% of any variation in the final exam score is explained by this interaction between gender and type of technique. Now if we look at type of technique by itself, its partial at a squared is 0.323, which means about 32% of final exam score can be explained by the different groups. Now we can also look at the effect of our covariate here pretest. You can see that is a statistically significant, has a statistically significant effect on the final exam score. And you can see it also accounts, or it can account for about 65% or close to 65% of the variance in the outcome. So pretest was a good covariate. It does have a strong effect on the post test, on our outcome. So it was important for us to choose that as a covariate. And so now the effect of that covariate will be uh, accounted for in this analysis. Now the final table in the ANCOVA output is the estimated marginal means. And this is where we're going to see the means for uh, each of our independent variables, the mean scores for each of our independent variables and each of their levels. So as you can see here, we've got the male and female mean, and again, these are adjusted for the effect of the covariate. And then we can also see that for the type of instructional method, including the 95% confidence intervals. Now, one other thing we asked for is the, the profile plot. And what we can see here is we're looking at the adjusted means for the final exam score separated out by group of instruction as well as by gender. So what we can see here is we can see two of the lines cross. So we can see the line for the confidence building group and the line for the math skill group cross. So that indicates that there is that interaction between the two independent variables. And you can see how it moves from male to female. So it's clear that there is an interaction between the two independent variables. 
So for males, the final exam score was lower for the confidence building group compared to, compared to the math skills group. But for females, the math skills group score was lower than it was for the confidence building group. So we see kind of a, a dichotomous or a kind of an opposite effect here of male and female in the two different types of uh, interventions. So this clearly suggests that males and females appear to respond differently to the programs. And then we can also, uh, to a certain extent, see that for the group work, the males had a lower score than the females on the group work. So that indicates that there appears to be differences in type of technique as far as producing final exam score, but there's this interaction between gender as well that we have to take into account. So it becomes difficult to say now that one type of instructional technique is better than the other because of this interaction. So we have to be very careful as we make conclusions about the effect of this intervention because we have this effect of gender as well, and these two things interact. So we can't get too excited when we get a significant result like this because we have to keep in mind what we're attempting to do. So for example, the results here do not indicate that all males benefited from one program versus the other and not all females benefited from one program versus another. Remember, we're comparing the mean score for a group as a whole. So by summarizing across the group as a whole, we inevitably lose some information about individual effects. And so when we evaluate the efficacy of these different programs, we may want to consider additional analyses to explore how many people benefited versus how many people actually did worse. So to summarize what we did here with the two-way and COVO is we looked at the effect of two independent variables on one outcome while controlling for uh, another variable, a confounding variable, using the ANCOVA method. And so we're able to look at the effect of individual variables, but more importantly, the interaction between two variables on this outcome. And so we use p-values, we used means, we used effect sizes, uh, and we can also use confidence intervals to look at the clinical significance of these outcomes. So hopefully you enjoyed this video, hopefully you learned something from it, and good luck using this technique in your own research.